Investing News, and I'm here with Oscar Joffre, who's the author of Equity Crowdfunding, The Global Phenomenon 101. Oscar, thanks very much for taking the time to meet with me and have this conversation. You're welcome. It's great to be here. So, um, equity crowdfunding is a, is a big movement that's happening in a lot of places. It's, it's a subset of crowdfunding in general, where people actually, instead of just pre-buying a product or making a donation to a, an organization, they're actually buying shares in the company and using crowdfunding as a way of, of doing that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how it's happening in, in different parts of the world and, and what the phenomenon is, is like? <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, actually, the, the global phenomenon is just that because it, it, it's one of those things that it's coming at every jurisdiction in the world like a tsunami. It's one of the things that I always tell people. This is not one of those things that you can stand still and watch it come at a you know at a slow pace. It's coming really fast. Why? Because the crowd wants it. The crowd, meaning the Canadians, the Americans, everybody, the everyday uh, citizen wants the ability to invest in an opportunity that could be early stage or whatever stage they're comfortable with, and to be able to make that choice on their own. Mm -hmm. What the equity crowdfunding provides these are these portals that bring the company and these investors together and for them to be able to transact either an investment, uh, you know, putting in capital and then getting some shares or debt, it doesn't matter. Okay. And it's very transformational. I mean, this is, this is so empowering because you probably know this, that only a very small percentage of our population actually gets access to opportunity. So the rest of us have to sit back and wait and wait and watch, you know, go up and Go maybe next time. So when will next time be? Now's the time. Equity crowdfunding is something that's quite big in the UK. Uh, they seem to be doing very well with it over there. Um, lots of tax incentives for, for equity crowdfunding. Um, what do you see happening over there? Well, in every country there is um, different types of uh, you know tax incentives. UK is definitely uh, really taking a great lead on that. Um, but other countries we should not overlook is Australia. I mean, the, the world's right. first equity crowdfunding was, came out of Australia. Still there, okay. 10 years operating. They've had zero fraud. They've raised, uh, helped companies raise $135 million. And I got to tell you, I mean, that, that is what we can look forward to. Um, but what is really significant, I mean, in numbers, we have to look only south of the border. Right. In the United States, equity crowdfunding, Title II, went live September the 23rd of 2013. Okay. And what's really remarkable about that is that during that time, till May 30th, $100 billion worth of deals wow. have been filed to raise capital via equity crowdfunding, and $30 billion has been closed. Okay. $30 billion. The largest equity crowdfunding uh, deal to date is $130 million closed. So it's not about raising 50,000. Those exist. Right. But what equity crowdfunding is, there's a deal for everybody's size. Okay. So there is, uh, and there's, there, it's not just for, you know, technology companies. It could be manufacturing, food, mining, mining. I was just going to ask. And so is this happening in the mining space as well? It's about to. And I'm really excited to be right at the forefront of this. Um, mining is Canada's you know, everybody knows Canada for mining. Right. We have the most listed issuers in the world. We have uh, the most mining companies in the world. It, it, I mean, every number we excel. So it only makes natural sense that the first equity crowdfunding portal in the world in the mining sector launch in Canada. And uh, they will be launching in the months of October here in Canada called Klondike Strike. And it will be there okay. to facilitate investors who are either accredited or non-accredited under the offering memorandum. Okay. And for okay. private or public mining companies, but as well mining uh, service providers. So let's okay. say you have a software program that you need financing is for the mining sector, you would go to Klondike Strike to uh, uh, seek investment. And this is transformational because, you know, one of the things that I've been very privileged is being around the table, listening to investors, speak to the regulators, speak to the stock exchanges and, and a few others. And the feedback they're hearing is, how come I qualify and I yet I don't get to see uh, opportunities? Right. And this is really the, 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 the main reason why equity crowdfunding is just coming fast 
Have you ever seen the regulators act as quickly as they have in Canada to anything? It has been quick. It has been very quick. And, and they did us a great favor. Every country around the world has maybe a maximum of two exemptions in which a company can raise capital in. Mm -hmm. Canada has four. Okay. And two of them are already live. Right. So you have to be thankful you live in a country like ours to, to really um, uh, take advantage of it. And by the way, and, and even within our own country, our regulators are saying you can allow foreign investors and right. you can bring in foreign issuers. So you have right. both the best world. And uh, so I think the resource sector is, is going to do extremely well here because we're starting to see private equity money flow into it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying every great idea will get funded. That's not for us to decide. Right. Let the crowd decide. Sure. Yeah. So if you have the credentials and you have all that, you will succeed. I encourage everybody, though, to before they jump into equity crowdfunding to understand the fundamentals, what makes equity crowdfunding work and what will not work. Because I think the days of, okay, I'm going to raise capital for my money company and get listed and I'll act like a private company does not work in this space. Okay. This is a very transparent um, uh, ecosystem, You're which right. means that everybody has to be very visible to the market. Yeah. Um, there are no more websites where it's just the URL and no bodies and fit. No, absolutely not. In right. fact, you have to be very face facing the audience. So that's why I like equity crowdfunding that that transparency that it brings okay. is it's unbelievable. We have never seen anything like it. it, not even in the listed issuer market. Right. So, but in Canada, we have the different jurisdictions, and yes. within those different jurisdictions, there are different things happening with crowdfunding. Saskatchewan has adopted a crowdfunding um, uh, plat well uh, capability within the regulations. Um, I know there are differences with the offering memorandum exemption as well. Yes. So, so how is that going to all play out? Well, okay, so let's walk through the four exemptions we have. Okay. So first of all, we have the accredited investor exemption, right. which is all across Canada. Yeah. 1.4 million Canadians qualify. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So that's a big one. Now let's talk about the offering memorandum. You are correct. It's all of Canada except Ontario, right. but coming soon. Oh, coming okay. soon. Okay. So it, we're, not, we're not years away. We're not months away from that exemption now being all across Canada. Okay. That's the, significant. It is. Isn't yeah, it? That's huge. I mean, that's one third of all Canadians. Right. Right. Um, and just so you're aware, most people may not know this. In 2011, $151 billion was raised using the offering memorandum in Canada. Right. So it's not a small, <laughs> it's no, actually but that, quite large. That, that's, there's been a lot of use of the offering memorandum exemption in real estate, hasn't yes, there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas not as much in, in tech or in uh, mining that I'm aware Just because of. not widely understood. Right. And, right. and you know, part of the, the ecosystem for it to work is that we need to work together, the right. lawyers, the accounts. Um, part of the equity crowdfunding is the entire ecosystem needs to understand we're trying to support the investors and the issuers to make sure they facilitate a transaction in the most cost-effective way. Okay, so yeah. the days of selling an offering memorandum for 75000 by a lawyer are gone. Ah, it's I not see. going to happen. It's going to have to cost much less than Much that. less than that because right. otherwise equity crowdfunding will fail. Okay, okay. So, so all right. I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, no, it's okay. There's it's a, a good couple question. more exemptions. Yeah, so the third exemption is called the equity crowdfunding exemption. I know it, the name itself is, so we have provinces like Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia that are actually proposing it. Right. So this is proposing. So what's really interesting about this exemption, it allows a company to raise up to a million and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the maximum. It allows them to get investors to a maximum investment of $2,500. Okay. But the investor in the company must come from that province. Right. So right. You're, you're limited to that. It's not bad, though. You know, when you consider it, that's fairly large. When you think that Ontario's got 13 million right. <laughs> residents, uh, that's a fairly good chunk. Then the last exemption is called the startup exemption. Um, this one, I'm personally torn by it because I believe in a regulated marketplace. But mm -hmm. here's what that exemption is. It allows um, a company to raise $150,000 mm -hmm. every six months. Ah, okay. Okay. It allows the investor to invest up to a maximum of $1,500 a month. Okay. Okay. 
the portal operating it right. can be anybody. Okay. They don't have to be a professional exam market dealer. They don't uh, have to be a restricted dealer. They don't have to do anything. In fact, there's no financial statements, no business plan. So we call it the wild, wild west. Right. The only provinces that are actually considering it are British Columbia, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Nova, uh, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. Okay. Ontario has decided not to. Right. I personally believe that that exemption is not good for companies or investors because we do need the regulators to oversee what's going on. And, right. and on this exemption, I know the amount seems small enough, but it's always the small ones that create the biggest noise, right? So we, um, so, but at least we have four. And, right. and, and no company can now say that, well, you know, I need capital for my opportunity. Well, you have all these choices. So you have no reason other than you don't have the initiative to, to, to pursue it. There is, you know, worldwide, there's over 500 equity crowdfunding portals. Mm -hmm. um, as a Canadian company, I can go to the United States and equity crowdfunding uh, under Title II. Right, right. So the choices are there. Right. The question is, what are you going to do about it, right? Uh, but I do recommend not only for the, the people that are going to look at equity crowdfunding to invest, uh, but also the issuers, the ecosystem to understand how it works because the only way we're going to build a trust ecosystem, which equity crowdfunding needs to do, is that everybody knows what everybody's doing. Right, right. And otherwise, the investor will never put the money in, no right. matter how good the idea is. Yeah. It will just disappear. So um, have there been any deals done in Australia for mining companies just because well, or exploration probably more accurately, because with exploration, there is risk initially, and then that risk decreases over time as more and more capital is spent progressing the project. And so it, it's different from a technology where you might develop it and then need money to go into production or something like yes. that. Um, you know, it's interesting you would say that. Um, I found it interesting that nobody was doing mining. <laughs> Okay. Anywhere. Um, so Aesop, great company, Paul Nieder and the team have a, you know, they do everything except mining. Okay. And yet mining is a, mining is a very specialized area, yes. as you know. I mean, you need to understand the difference between exploration, mine planning, development and production. Right. You need to understand what the 43101, where, where does it come in? So you understand the risk, as you indicated. So it takes a, a skilled type of group to actually launch it. Right. Um, the technology is a facilitator. But if the investor is going to trust that um, the portal did due diligence and understood what the company was actually putting up there, um, it's important that that team has that experience. And based on all the equity portals around the world that I've seen so far, mining is not, at, they don't, they don't um, it's not at the top of the game. Right. And, and I believe a part of it is because it's a Canadian thing. This ah. is a Canadian. I mean, look, we have the world's largest mining conference every year in March, yeah. PDAC. We have uh, trade shows like Cambridge House providing education. So we, we actually have to be very proud of what we have. I mean, companies like yourself, we don't see this in the United States for the resource sector. Right. They rely right. on us feeding them. That it is data. definitely the Canadian specialty. Yes, yeah. it is. So it's going to take a Canadian company to take it to the world. And um, I'm very excited that Klondike Strike is going to do that. By launching, it will then begin to uh, have its model duplicated in the United States, Australia, Dubai, Hong Kong, South Africa, the mining hubs of the world. Right. And Canada needs to put that out there. And uh, the other sectors will do well, don't get me wrong, but I believe mining is a very strong sector for all of Canada. We all want an opportunity to invest in something early. You right. know? It, the worst part is just not being given the chance. I think that's the, the main reason that drives crowdfunding. You just want the chance. Right. Excellent. Well, I think that's really good. I appreciate this. I think this will be good for our investing audience. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. This is Mike Roger. I'm here with Oscar Joffre, who is the author of Equity Crowdfunding Global Phenomenon 101. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.